Hi and welcome to another edition of Plastic Models by Regular Dude and the next in the series Plastic Models for Beginners. Uh, this is going to be an intro and take a look at what's in the box of the next kit which is the Tamiya number 35270 SDKFZ 222 Panzer Spiewagen 4x4 armored car. Um, this is a pretty nice kit um, and it shouldn't be too taxing for a second kit for a beginning type modeler. But we'll also add a little, few more parts um, and some photo etch and an aluminum gun barrel. So some people refer to it as a multimedia kit because it has plastic and metal in it. So. Um, real briefly before we dig into the box, uh, I will be introducing some uh, different tools probably in this kit, uh, building this uh, building this kit. Uh, I will also be using the airbrush um, on this on this build as well. Uh, be using probably a few different kinds of paints and introducing some uh, new weathering products that I have discovered. And it's going to be pretty much all the builds from here on out are going to be introducing new things, maybe bringing back old things, you know, working with what makes building the kit more enjoyable and adds a level of realism to it. And also, you know, just depending on the, uh, the setting in which uh, the kit will be portrayed. So uh, that's pretty much it. Let's uh, change the camera angle and we'll take a look at the box. All right, so let's see what is in the box here. Um, I have already taken the parts in the inside out of the plastic bags to save a little time. Okay, what we have is the SDKFZ 222 Leichter Panzer Spavagen 4x4 uh, by Tamiya. It is kit number 270. The full number is 35270. And as you can see here in this beautiful yellow box, it includes photo etch parts and aluminum gun barrel, which is a nice addition. So without further ado, let's take a look at what's inside this box. All right, so um, first thing, I didn't take these out of the plastic bag, so I'm not gonna really go over them. Um, we have uh, fuel and water cans and fuel drums with the associated parts that go with it which is kind of a nice little touch uh, could come in handy doing a diorama or something like that um, so that's a pretty nice little addition this part right here looks like it was molded in 1995 um, so this is obviously an addition to this kit because this kit even though the box is 2003 this is an older kit that was molded in 1975 so what they've done is they've repackaged it with uh, some additional parts being the um, fuel drum, fuel can and drum set and um, the photo etch parts because those didn't originally come with the kit. So first part here is the uh, the upper hull. Uh, the molding's pretty good. Now there's some rough edges right here a little bit of flash right there. Uh, some cleanup points right here, the sprue gates, where the sprue gates attached. Um, but it looks good. But you can tell that this is an older kit just by the molding because uh, you know the molds start to wear after a while and um, it's not as crisp as say a newer release. But that said, this is still pretty decent. Uh, then we have the lower hull, same thing. Um, this will work on either the SDKFZ 222 or 223. Um, a little bit of detail underneath. Pretty plain, but there's other parts that go on top of that, so it's not bad. And then these parts fit together. Thusly. So we'll have to do a little bit of uh, cleanup, get those edges looking nice, 
gap in the front, but nothing that can't be handled. But see this, that's where this is going to be good because this is going to introduce some new skills we'll need to work on for building kits. But it fits together well, so that'll be fine. Um, then we have some turret parts. Um, the figure. More of the hull parts. Um, a fuel can here and here. Uh, the detail is not as nice as on the uh, the first bag I showed you, so we'll be using those instead of these. We may have to uh, scratch build some parts to attach those to the vehicle, but, but we'll see. Uh, looks looks good though. A little bit of cleanup, you know. Again, it's an older mold, um, but it will be fine. Yeah, right there. Tamiya 1975. That's when this kit was first molded. So it's an old kit. Uh, right here we have the main gun and then the uh, machine gun, coaxial machine gun. More hull parts, seats for the inside. All those parts look decent. There will be a little bit of cleanup involved. Again, nothing that can't be handled. Uh, the wheels, um, wheels look good, not much as far as the seam line on there, should be really easy to clean up. Wheel parts, more hull parts, hatches, shovel, the jack, jack handle, so those look good again, molded 1975 as well as this. Uh, suspension parts. Um, uh, drive lines, differentials, axles, uh, more hull parts, suspension components. So it all looks pretty good. It'll take a little bit of cleanup, but it'll be fine. Um, here's a piece of string. This is looks like a piece of cotton string to use for the tow rope. Um, so the thing, the the more modern kits come with nylon string, which uh, um, is a little bit nicer because you don't have to worry about all the fuzziness of uh, of cotton string. But there's a way to take care of that, and if I decide to use that, that's I'll show you how to do that. Um, then the cable ends, which is kind of nice. Those look pretty good. Okay, so that's the plastic. So then we have the metal parts. Um, the photo etch and the aluminum barrel. So the photo etch, this is basically the uh, the screen that goes on top of the turret. The, the turret is an open top and these screens help to prevent you know grenades from being chucked in there I guess. Uh, but that's pretty nice. Uh, most of the time photo etch comes um, as brass. But Tamiya, in my experience, Tamiya usually uses, I think this is nickel. Um, and there's not really that big of a difference other than, you know, the color and the brass may be a little more malleable and bendable than the, uh, than the nickel, but we'll see. Anyway, that's the photo etch parts. Just two parts, nothing too strenuous. And then the aluminum barrel, and that looks pretty nice. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. As you can see, it's pretty nice. The end of the barrel is open, and then the back of the barrel is hollow for mounting onto the main gun. And the nice thing about an aluminum barrel as opposed to uh, um, the regular kit barrels, especially on older kits, on the Panzer II that um, I did in the first Plastic Models for Beginners video, um, it's just a solid rod of plastic with minimal detail on the outside. Um, the end of the barrel is solid, so it doesn't really look like a barrel, it just looks like a, a plastic rod. So that's kind of nice, you know, aluminum barrels, if they don't come with kits, well, a lot of kits come with them nowadays, but if they don't, um, newer technologies allow the plastic through uh, slide molding technology 
um, allows them to be hollowed out in the end so they look a lot better. Um, there's not as much seam lines to clean up uh, or anything like that. So metal barrels are just you know nice to have and they can be bought in the aftermarket as well for almost every vehicle out there. So those are the metal parts. Then we have the decals. Um, here are the decals. Uh, lots of different uh, markings. Got Africa Core um, and others, depending on what uh, what scheme I go with. So that's decal. So now let's take a look at the instructions. Um, typical to me instructions gives you a little information on the vehicle in uh, English, German, French. It looks like, and I'm assuming Japanese. Um, so it's nice to have a little bit of information. Uh, suggested. Uh, tools, cement, primer. Primer is a very good idea on a kit like this because of the metal items. Um, paint can be very fragile on metal. Even with primer it can still be fragile depending on the type of primer you use. But primer is a good idea with the metal parts. So I'm going to say yes on primer on this, this, uh, this kit. Then it gives you the different color callouts, the potential colors that you will need. Um, these are in Tamiya colors, XF60, X, XF63, so on. Um, so you can find online uh, references, um, conversion charts, I guess you'd call them, of colors that are close. Um, like for instance, XF60 is dark yellow. XF63 German Gray, um, X10 Gunmetal, X18 Semi Gloss Black, XF1 Flat Black, XF2 Flat White, so on. So it gives you the name so you can get a good approximation of the color that you need. Um, as far as the assembly steps, basic Tamiya stuff um, looks like the hatches can be. Uh, no. Those are fixed hatches. The hinges aren't movable, so they're, they'll be closed. Uh, more of the uh, underside parts. Suspension, the wheels. Attaching the wheels, and as I did on the first kit, I will not be attaching the wheels other than temporarily um, while building just so I can, uh, when it comes to the weathering process, it's a little bit easier for painting and weathering if the wheels aren't attached. Uh, the interior uh, of the turret, the main gun. Now I'm going to assume that these are not the original instructions that came with this kit because it does have the metal barrel and it doesn't look like there is a plastic barrel available on this. So that's interesting. And then installing the gun, the gunner's seat. Um, now in a case like this it's nice to have a detailed gun and we'll, I'll you know, be sure to do a good job on this and paint it because you will be able to see it through the open, open turret. Um, you'll be able to see part of the inside so I'll be doing that. Uh, and then attaching the parts the upper and lower hull and then more details fenders stowage boxes all those being attached mufflers um, armored cover for the uh, I'm assuming the radiator, at least ventilation for the engine. Um, attaching these fuel cans, which we might uh, redo those. 
And then the last, looks like the last step, nope, uh, step 11 is cutting out and bending the uh, photo edge. Get into that when the time comes. Attaching the photo edge, attaching more tools and small, small parts, tow cable and the figure. So it looks like you can position the um, photo edge screens in either open or closed position depending on if you have uh, this commander figure. And then the last uh, step is the assembly of the uh, extra fuel and water cans and the uh, fuel drums. So that's kind of nice. And then the last portion is uh, gives you applying the decals, you know, the decal instructions, and then the color schemes that are available. So looks like we have three color schemes available. We have A, which is First Company, 4th Kradschutzen, Motorcycle Battalion, 24th Panzer Division, South Russia, August 1942. And that calls for um, Tamiya XF-63, which is the German Gray. So that's the first that's available. Then there is 1st Company, 10th Kradschutzen, Motorcycle Battalion, 10th Panzer Division, Tunisia. 1943, and that looks, uh, that one is a camouflage pattern, which is kind of interesting, and that would be in XF-60, which is a dark yellow, which will be the main color, and then XF-63 for the uh, sprayed on stripes, which is the uh, uh, German gray. So that's kind of an interesting scheme. And then the last scheme available is 1st Company, 3rd Reconnaissance Battalion, 5th Light Division, North Africa, March 1941. And that one has the Africa Corps uh, decals on it. And that one is in German Gray. So that's kind of an interesting one as well. So both of those are kind of interesting. I think I'm going to go with one of those two there. We'll see which one I decide on. Um, and this is the rest of uh, the, uh, the Africa Corps, 1941. So that is it. That's the contents of the box. That's what's on the instructions. And um, so the next video, that'll be the end of this video. So the next video, I will actually... Uh, start the assembly process of the SDKFZ-222. So, thank you for joining me on Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and kit number two of Plastic Models for Beginners. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything like that, put them in the comments down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So until the next video, I will see you later.